All right, good evening, good evening, everybody, good evening. Don't forget to hit the share button. Uh, share this. Share this. Good evening. Good evening. A little bit for people to get in here. Good evening, good evening, good evening, Sister Barry. I saw the, the, the report for, for Brother John Barry. We are praising God and still praying. Amen. Good evening. Good evening to all y'all, Sister Bowser. Good evening, good evening, good evening. All right, we're going to give it just a couple of minutes, y'all. Uh, let's hold tight. We're going to get started. Yes, he is. Good evening, good evening. Give it about one more minute, and we're gonna we're gonna jump into our lesson tonight. Uh, it may not be that long, but we'll see. It may get good to us. We never know. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight for our Bible study. It's, I'm grateful and thankful that to all of you who are tuned in watching us tonight, I hope something is said that it can bless us uh, and strengthen our walk with God that we could truly know and understand that whom we serve uh, is always standing by. And because he's standing by and because of who he is, we are always do our best to do the things that are pleasing unto God. Amen. Amen. So let's do this. We're going to pray and then we'll jump into our session four on tonight. Uh, let's pray. God, our Father, how we thank you for what you've done for us throughout the course of this day. Father, how you've kept us, how you've afforded us this time to be able to come and learn and dive deeper into your word right now. God, I pray that you bless all of us. Open our hearts, our minds, consecrate us, God, that we can receive something from you, that we can take it, make it applicable to our lives, Father, that someone can see you through us. Father, we pray that you would build us up, strengthen us, oh God. Let your word be embedded within us, that we can carry it for days to come. God, I pray that you bless every household that may be listening now, that may watch later. Father, I pray that you would see and hear the desires of their heart. Father, and if it be your will, that you would grant it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, speak to us like only you can. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, tonight we are jumping into session four. The information of the scripture and all that is already pinned down there. Uh, question that we have tonight. Uh, is Jesus 
The only way to God is Jesus the only way to God. We've been, uh, over the last few weeks, we've been looking at uh, how to be confident in the face of hard questions. How to be confident or being confident in the face of hard questions when it comes to uh, our our beliefs, when it comes to our, 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 our what we believe and feel of the God, the the, the Father of whom we serve, the Son who He sent, who died for us. Uh, we've asked these questions: Does it really matter which truth I believe? Uh, we uh, we we had our miracles relevant. We had why do we suffer? And then tonight question is asked, is Jesus the only way to God? Now, us as Christians, the automatic answer we have right from the, we don't even have to think about it. We know the answer is yes. Jesus is the only way to God because why? Jesus is the son of God and he's the only one who can bring us to God because of what he did and the atonement of our sin and all of those things that how he gave his life as a ransom. So we understand as Christians, we fully understand, yes, Jesus is the only way to God. No man can come through the Father but by me. We understand that. Uh, but again, we're asking the questions. How do we stand in the midst of uh, uh, hard questions? How do we stand against those people that are coming at us trying to test our faith? Or, uh, or some of you may put it, trying to test your gangster when it comes to your relationship with God. But we're looking at First John uh Chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. We will definitely be breaking those things up. First um, uh, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. Uh, we'll start with verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to read those from the Amplified Version. And we'll jump from there. Uh, it says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. This is how we know that we love God's children, when we love God and obey his commands. For this is what love for God is, to keep his commands. And his commands are not a burden, because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world our faith. Who is the one who conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? We often get hit occasionally with those questions that make you, uh, make you uh, have to stand firm when it comes to the conversations that you have, when people are asking you about your relationship with God, what do you believe? Uh, and a lot of times when you're having those conversations, have you ever noticed uh, a lot of those people are narrow-minded? A lot of those people have a one-track mind. They believe this, this, or whatever the case may be. It, they're they're narrow-minded and not really open to believing something else. Uh, on the flip side of that, people can say the same thing about Christians, about us and our relationship. We can be, they, they, they can say the same, we're, we're narrow-minded, we're not looking at the bigger picture, but it's a difference between what they're believing and what we're believing. We're, we're standing on what we uh, ultimately call our faith, but not only our faith, we, we stand on past experiences. We, we stand on history and what uh, God has done for us. We stand on how we can look back over things that have happened in our lives and we understand that nobody could have done that but God himself. Not a physician, not no money, not your friends. We understand and we stand on that truth and we take God's uh, word uh, to heart and we trust and believe he'll do everything that he said he's going to do. However, there is some flip side of that of you have different groups. You have atheists, you have universalists, you have uh, animists, you have all of these different people who in the world that we walk around with, they, 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 they can be considered the same thing. But all of us uh, have a narrow minded type of thinking. Question is, which narrow minded type of thinking is right? We know 
we know, we, we, we understand the truth of God. We understand him sending his son. We understand the relationship that we have is the truth. Uh, every, everybody else, they, they, like, they, 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 they basing their stuff on science. They're basing their stuff on, uh, idol gods. They're basing their stuff on, uh, uh, uh other strong beliefs or whatever they have. But the true risen, true savior, truth of the world, the light of the world, we understand is God, the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. We get all of that. The thing about these first verses that we read, it's, it's pointing out very evident that he's offered to everybody. He's offered to everybody, regardless of the way you think, regardless of their own reality. It's by his design, he is offered to everyone. I say everyone, I mean everybody, to atheists, to all of those people, I, every non-Christian, all of these people that I just named, he is still offered to them. That's, that's just who he is. The question comes, the thing about it is you have to accept him. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not going to force himself on you. He's not, but he's available to everybody else. Of course, every non-Christian's faith, uh, they, they don't refer to uh, uh, their belief about salvation. As a matter of fact, so most of them don't even use the word salvation. Instead, they may talk about it as being an ultimate thing, an ultimate being, an ultimate achievement in life. But we know we live a life based on salvation. We live a life based on understanding that we were saved by grace. We understand grace and mercy. And, 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 and we get it. There are others uh, uh, beliefs. There are other people who think certain ways. There are other people who don't believe in God, this, that, and the other. We don't love them any less. We under, because that's what we're supposed to be doing as children of God. We love everybody, right? Uh, but we, we also understand that, hey, that's your way of thinking. We don't pray for you that God changes you around, that God moves you. Uh, because we, we, we totally understand that even the Christian salvation is still much broader than even Christians think as a whole. Salvation is, we, we still have it. Regardless of your age, regardless of how much of the word you know, you still having touched into the, uh, 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 the, the the multitude of blessings and things and understanding of Christian salvation. It's so much broader. Uh, we, we, we stand and build upon the things that we've learned. We stand and build upon the things that we've experienced. But eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. We, we, we haven't even seen or heard or experienced the things that God has in store for us yet which tells us that it is a broader picture. Christian salvation is not even a single event. Here, here's, okay, let me back up. Christian salvation is not a single event. I get it, people, people get the misconception that uh, it's a single event. Oh, I came to church. I went down to the front. I gave the pastor my hand. I told him I want to be born again. I trust. I believe God. I went. I got baptized. And that they and they think that's it. Yes, you're saved. Yes, you're, you're, you're there. But it's not a single event. It's twofold. There's justification. There's sanctification. We've talked about this before. We've talked about how justification is a beginning part of the salvation process. It is you uh, 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 speaking that, hey, I'm trying to be born again, born of God, being being born and washed in him uh, uh, just like Jesus Christ did. That is justification. It is saying that I am believing that God sent his only son who died for me and arose again Sunday morning. That is justification. That is the first process. The lifelong process after that is sanctification. Sanctification, simply put, means now that I have got to know him, now that I've accepted him in my heart, now is when the real work starts. 
Now is when I got to figure out and, and I got to put forth an effort to develop this relationship with God. And okay, let me put it to you this way. Imagine it like this. Imagine you get married, right? You you done married the love of your life. You 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 they 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 your boo thing, they this, that, and the other, and they are it, right? Imagine getting married and then y'all live in two separate houses. Don't, don't make sense, right? Imagine getting married. E even if you're living in the same house, imagine sleeping in two separate bedrooms or, 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 or being apart. That relationship cannot bloom and blossom into a true marriage with the separation gap that's there. It's like, oh, we got married. Oh, we have some paper, but we still going to live the lives that we want to live oh, any old kind of way, separate and apart. It doesn't work like that. It, it's it's it, it. Once you get married, you would expect, you would think, oh, now we're living as one. Now we are learning each other because when you got married, yeah, y'all dated for a little bit, but now you're married. Now you're still learning one another. You're still growing one another. You're still trying to get closer to one another, even though you're married. Now there's still some years to go to develop your marriage and to keep that thing going, right? So you have to have a relationship with God just the same. It's the sanctification. It is now you've accepted him through justification. Now here comes the marriage. Now here comes, let me stick with him through thick and thin. Let me develop this. I, I got to finish. I got to see this thing through because I want to grow in him. That's what sanctification is. It is years to come of growth and a relationship bonding closer and closer for you, not for him. Because once he's accepted you, his love is, un is unconditional. He's, his, his grace is always given. His mercy is always everlasting. So it's not for him, but it's for you to continue to grow and learn who he is, what he has what we should be doing. All of these things are there, but here's the thing. He's available to everybody. He's th this marriage, this Christian relationship, this marriage is re is, is available to everybody. Uh the part of the process uh again, it's 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 this it's the sanctification part that a lot of people start to fall off on. You get married. Oh, you you justified. But once you start to learn a little bit more, you're like, wait a minute, God, this you you didn't tell me I was gonna have to love my enemies. You didn't tell me I was gonna have to turn the other cheek. You didn't tell me I was gonna have to get a coat off my back. I, I like that coat. You you didn't tell me I it's the sanctification process. It, it's 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 our growing in our salvation that Jesus has provided. It's, 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 and then how do I experience his love? How do I experience? Now you, you understand how you experience your love in your marriage, but how do you understand your, your, how do you experience the love in him? You, you, you experience that through, uh, by obeying his commandments. Our obedience shows and proves our love for God. That, that, that's how we show God we love him through our obedience and our love from him, that a love for him. That that that's what we do. That that's how we but it's a great thing. His love don't end. His love, he, he has an abundance of love. His love continues to get you. You haven't even experienced all the love he has for you yet. But the good thing is he doesn't just have enough love for me. He doesn't just have enough love for you. He has enough love. For everybody. That's why those first few verses was talking about, hey, it, it's offered to everybody. He's available to everybody. Uh, uh, and then it, it, it pushes a little further. Let's look at verses 6 through 10. Verses 6 through 10 says, uh, it says, Jesus Christ, he is the one who came by the water and blood, not by water only, but by water and by the blood. And the spirit is the one who testifies because the spirit is the truth. For there are three, uh, for there are three that testify, 
the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are in agreement. If we accept human testimony, God's testimony is greater because it is God's testimony that he has given about his son. The one who believes in the son of God has this testimony within himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony, uh, the testimony God has given about his son. God is, he, he, God is unique. And this task of having salvation and being justified, this task is unique. And he is unique for this task. Uh, when you're trying to discover the truth about anything, we have to think through what evidence exists to back up our conclusions, right? Uh, when, when it comes to studying the physical world, there will be some ways we can explore scientifically. We can look around and see what's happening. You got science books, you got all of these things. But when it comes to spiritual truth, uh, there's also some evidence that can be brought to the table, right? We, 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 we all have a testimony. We all have some evidence that we can bring to the table and tell somebody, listen, I remember when I was going through this. I remember when I was trying to do this. I remember when I wasn't even trying to do nothing, but was still blessed with some. All of us have some things that we could lean on and tell somebody that, listen, couldn't nobody else do this? It, it, this was unique to him. Couldn't nobody? This, he's the only person that was able to do this particular task. Remember all of those other people, the naturalists, the aminists, the pantheists, uh, the pantheists, I'm sorry, uh, the non-Christian thesis. All of these people uh, have, they think they have some things that, that could back up their belief. But guess what? The naturalists, they, they, they don't believe in God. Uh, but they, they, they talk about maybe the history of Jesus, but they have no evidence. Uh, Amnimists, they don't have any evidence. They think, of, oh, it's spiritual ancestors, this, that, and the other. No, but they ain't got no evidence. Uh, the pantheists, the same thing. They, they, they typically believe that Jesus was a man who, during his life on earth, that he just oh, lived an extra high up, uh, enlightened life that, 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 that most humans can't possibly do. But however, they don't have that. They believe that, that that's what took place, but they don't have nothing to back that up. Even a non-Christian thesis, they 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 think, uh, oh yeah, you've sent, but you know, I I just not sure what what took place. None of these people have any anything to back up what they're saying. Many would say that even uh, it's just a Christian belief that Jesus is God in the flesh is so ultimately based on faith. There's no evidence to back that up. But we can all beg to differ on that. Uh, we understand that's not true because the evidence is found. The evidence is found in both historical records. It's found in personal experience of people coming to know Jesus as their personal uh, savior and their personal relationship. Uh, as a matter of fact, John laid it out right through, through verses 6 through 10. Well, he uses a phrase, watch this. He uses the phrase water and blood. Water and blood. This is the reference to the completeness of Christ's public ministry uh, because why it began, what did it begin with? Water. Baptism. And it ended with what? Crucifixion. Blood. Water and blood. Then John kept on talking. He went on through. He said, listen, then Christ's death by saying, listen, not only but by water, but by water and blood. He did this to explain. Listen, we we have some we we got some uh some truth. We got some 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 things that you can find out and 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 find out to be true. We we have some some evidence. Uh, but I mean, he 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 put the emphasis on all these things. He said, listen, he came. What he did on earth, he did that for us. Uh, but the fact that Jesus was a real person, acting in history, is not the single evidence. Uh, that he's on the way to heaven. We, we get that. We understand that. Uh, we also have the work of the Holy Spirit. We have the work of the Holy Spirit who testifies. And because of that, we understand that the Spirit is
is the truth. Spirit speaks to us, Spirit talks to us, Spirit leads us, the Spirit guides us, it gives us testimony in our heart to know and believe that this is true. It's, it's unique unto him. No, nobody else can do this. They, I don't care what uh, all these other people believe, all their other idol gods and all these things. Now, now we have to be careful because a lot of people, uh, when you talk about idol gods, we ain't talking about the gods of the sky. And we, we, the, 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 there are some fleshly things that we unfortunately idolize. You can idolize your money. You can idolize your car. You can idolize it. And you can think, oh, because the world gave me this. This must be the thing that I need to be trying to push and, and follow and lean on. I need to be pushing and following on my money. I need to be put. No, 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 no. You have to push and follow and be obedient to the God, our Father, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. If you're obedient unto this, all of these things shall be added unto you. But it, you, you can't get there unless you truly believe who God is. Now, our decision, obviously our decision to believe this is made by faith. We, 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 we understand there's no way to prove it scientifically. Uh, nothing about his existence can be proven scientifically. We, 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 we all understand that. I mean, there's no grave, right? He, he he was risen. <laughs> we we get that. We understand. Ain't no ain't no bones you can go back and find on this. He is risen. So we we understand that. So our faith, our faith. Now our faith is not a blind faith. Uh, our, our faith is a faith uh, that 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 we 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 don't have faith, and, and we 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 don't have faith that does not come with evidence. We have as evidence since God exists and he's revealed himself to humanity. We understand his existence represents actual reality. We, 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 we get that. We know, hey, listen, God, I, you, you sent your son. He, he, what he did was absolutely uh, amazing in the fact that could nobody else do it. But we're thankful that you sent your son who did it so he's unique in that and in, in that he was the only one able to perform the task we get that all these other people still looking at people if you go through the bible they was calling on uh their particular gods they were calling on their gods they waiting for something to happen nothing ever happened and then all of a sudden here comes this one who believes who says listen y'all y'all did enough let me call on my god let me show you so we understand uh, but then, then we'll, we'll then we'll go through these last verses of uh, chapter five, verses eleven to thirteen. It reads like this: It says, "And this is the testimony: God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. The one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have life." I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. That you have eternal life. There it is. He provides eternal life. He provides eternal life. Uh, still today, and it'll probably continue to happen. Many people criticize Christians for stating that eternal life is found only in the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. People will get attacked, continue to get attacked about that uh, as if it's like an exclusive thing uh, or, or him being exclusive is a negative thing. No, we, it's not a negative thing. Uh, it's, it's reality can only be structured one way and everyone has uh, a belief about how that structure exists, right? Every belief system in, in, in existence excludes somebody. Think about it. Every there, there, there are some of us. <laughs> I don't know how can what's what's a simple way to put this? All right, here it is. Cowboys, America's team. That excludes some people, right? Some of you may not be Cowboys fan, so you don't think it's America's team. 
For us, thinking that, knowing that, is the truth. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it excludes those San Francisco, Pittsburgh, and all those others because that is what we believe, right? It, 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 that, 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 that excludes them in, in what we believe. But however, God doesn't exclude anybody. Doesn't exclude anybody. Remember, I said he is available to everybody. You have to accept the fact that he wants you. Behold, I stand at the door. Now he's waiting for you to open the door. If you don't have him as a personal relation and don't have a personal relationship with you with him, he's standing at the door waiting for you to walk in. All you got to do is accept him as your personal savior and say, Lord, here I am. I, I know that you sent your son. If it wasn't for you sending your son, I'd be lost. Your son came. He died for me. He went to a borrowed tomb. He got up early Sunday morning, and I believe that, and I'm accepting him in my heart. It's as simple as that. As that. He's available. He, 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 he wants to, and then when you do that, you'll get eternal life. You, you've accepted him. You Now, again, sanctification is still there. We're still trying to work towards doing what's best and getting better in this thing we call life. So, yes, there is work to be done. There is work on you, not for somebody else, not for you to go running out. Oh, I got saved, and let me tell you how to get saved, what you need to be doing. No, 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 no. It's a personal work. It is an inside job that you have to start working on yourself to get better. Now, the, the again, eternal life, all of these things, we have to be examples. And when I say examples, I'm not meaning examples like, I'm going to sit you down and I'm going to tell you a thing or two. No, let your life be an example. Be a living, walking testimony and an example of what a real relationship with God looks like. Not a uh, Oh, I go to church on Sunday and I and I, I, I watch Bible study. I did but then every other day, people don't even know if you know God. You cannot live a life like that. Um Jesus. Jesus, uh, we understand he is God incarnated. He's God, he 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 objectively died from the cross for rose again for all of us. Uh and then we have to stand squarely on the reality that, hey, and, and embrace it. Embrace it. Jesus, Jesus said this. This is how we embrace the fact that he is real and we know, we know and we trust him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here's how we answer the question. No one comes to the Father except through me. Is Jesus the only way to God? There it is right there. No one comes to the Father except through me. You can't go around them. You have to accept him first. He's our connection. He's our, he's our go-to. He, he's the in-between. Because honestly, I'm thankful that for, for the go-between because Jesus had enough compassion to, to follow and carry out the plan of his Father for us. So I'm thankful for the go-between. I'm going to talk to him all day long. Listen, God, Jesus, go to your dad and tell him. I mean, if, if I could put it plainly that way, I need, I want to talk in the name of Jesus. I believe you that, you, listen, you, you standing there, you intervened and, and, and intercepted some stuff that I should have faced. So he came to give you eternal life because we were destined for a, 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 a damnation. We was destined for a fiery hell, but all oh, thanks be unto God. He provided us eternal life. You have to believe in the Son. If you believe in the Son, the S-O-N, if you believe in the Son, S-O-N, I'm going to say that because there was some other generations, there was some other people who believe in, oh, the Son has this power, the moon has, no, we're talking about the S-O-N. If you believe in that, <laughs> Yeah, my son, tell your daddy, tell him, I need you. If you believe in that. And that's what John was talking to us about. He recognized that there were some spiritual wolves. Spiritual wolves. Now, 
there are some people, let me, let me, let me throw this out there. There are some people who call themselves spiritual. But you have to make sure who they believe in. What do they believe in? Because there are some spiritual wolves. And there are some spiritual wolves among the believers who are trying to pull you away and get you to believe in a false gospel to get you to believe in some false, some, some lies, if you will. Uh, but the only thing we need to believe in is the Son of God. No man comes through the Father except through him. So is Jesus the only way to God? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I'm thankful that I can go to him. I can pray. I can talk to him. Tell him, hey, listen, I, I need you to intervene one more time. I need you to step and, <laughs> step and fill the void one more time. I, I, I know I done messed up. I probably done, I'm probably doing the same thing again right now, but I need you one more time. But because of the love that he has for you, because of how he cares for you, because he wants to see you succeed. He wants to see you. If you just continue to be obedient, we ain't all the way there. We won't ever get all the way there. But if you continue to push, put forth an effort, guess what? God will do the rest. So is Jesus the only way to God? Yes, he is. Stand firmly on that. Don't let nobody push you. Don't let nobody cause you to waver. Don't let, and when you standing and you talking about it, listen, tell them. Let me tell you how I know. You, 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 you thought it was this, that, and the other, but let me tell you how I know. Stand firmly. Life is going to throw some hard questions. People are going to throw some hard questions. You ain't got to know the Bible backwards and forwards. What you can stand on is your faith your personal experiences of what God has done for you and let your testimony fight all the way through and God will step in and intervene just the same and you just may save some lost soul. It's as simple as that. Amen. Listen, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got tonight. I hope it helped you just like it helped me because now I truly has been reminded that uh as long as I trust God, as long as I understand the justification and I'm still in the sanctification process and I'm still growing and pushing, doing my best to be obedient unto God, he'll handle everything else, everything else. Stand on the promises, stand on your testimonies of what God has done and let those things increase your faith and that you can just Lean and depend on it more and more each day. Amen. 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 Listen. Um, uh, amen. Thank y'all for being here on tonight. We will. Uh, hey, Sister Ferguson, I see you. Uh, we will uh, meet next week and the week after that. Uh, so two more sessions, and then after that, we won't meet again probably to the second week of 2024. Uh, I told y'all I'm not going to compete with y'all uh, and y'all shopping and y'all cooking and family time and all that. But uh, we got a couple more weeks that I, I will have lessons, and then we'll go on our winter break, if you will, or holiday break, and then we'll come back. Thank y'all so much uh, for your comments. Uh, uh, yeah, so that, that is the plan. But as we continue to go through the next few weeks and even days to come, remember to pray one for another. Uh, this season is a rough season. This season is a season to when people, again, you may have lost loved ones, uh, reminders of tragic things that may have happened. Uh, so we, I'm praying for each of you, especially in times like this, it's going to look a little different. Uh, some of the holidays. We've already gone through Thanksgiving and experienced some differences, but uh, we are now approaching Christmas and New Year's and we want to make sure that we're praying one for another. Y'all pray for us too. Uh, this is uh, a new season for us just the same. 
uh, without uh, our, our late pastor, Dr. Mag William Magnelia. Amen. So this is our first holiday season of going and not having him present, but we understand he's still present in the spirit. So we're leaning on that, but we're praying for each of you. I'm still praying for Brother Barry, uh, Brother John Barry, Sister Barry. So I'm praying for, for, for him. Uh, but let's keep each other lifted. Y'all remember to stay safe. Uh, Y'all remember to uh, 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 just uh, make sure that y'all do everything possible to be aware of your surroundings. We're in that season. Folk don't fellowship. Folk don't worship. Folks don't celebrate the same. Uh, so y'all make sure y'all be on the lookout for those things. Amen. Amen. So Sunday, I look forward to seeing all of y'all Sunday, 10 a.m. And we look to have a good time in the Lord. Let, oh, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. This is first Sunday. So we're having communion. So we want, okay. All right. No, I got you. All right. Let's pray. God, we thank you for just the reminder and the reinforcement of how we should be able to stand boldly and declare your name. Father, we pray that when we are faced with adversities, we're faced with things that may try to distract us, that may try to pull us away. God, that we can be victorious in that battle and that someone can truly see you for who you are and the love and compassion that you have. Now, God, as we get ready to go from this, uh, this lesson on tonight, Father, I pray for these, uh, your children who will be listening on tonight. Father, I thank you for their attendance. I thank you for what you've given to them on tonight. Now, God, let us take it and apply it to everyday living. Father, I pray strength. I pray for comfort. Whatever the desire that may be uh, in their heart that they may be, calling out, may be calling out to you for, Father, I pray if it be your will that you would grant it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, thank you for filling our cups. Now let us be able to leave this place, go to the rest of this week and pour that cup out that someone can understand that we trust, love, and depend on you. Now keep us as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, y'all stay safe. The weather's supposed to change up a little bit tomorrow. So y'all make sure if you have to be out in the roads, uh, drive very careful. Uh, and, and I look forward to seeing y'all on Sunday. Have a blessed rest of the week. Amen, amen. And I will see y'all later.